Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. My day is going just beautifully so far. And we're going to have some fun together. We're going to watch a sniper tank, the Leopard. And he is going to show us how to get some damage by blind shooting well-known bushes that tanks seem to always go to. Some uh, very high traffic positions in bushes which you can blind shoot and uh, get some damage if you're lucky. It's Doe Stack from the Fines Clan in his leopard what better tank to snipe and blind shoot uh than a than a leopard and he's going to go to an obvious position on this map i've made the mini map big so you can see it he's going to go to um h not uh, h8 in these bushes here right by the houses and typically on the enemy team tanks will go to c8 there's always people in these bushes, and so this is what you do when you blind shoot. This is how you do it. You aim for a, a well-known position right about there, and you take a shot, and then you back up. Because you don't want to be blind shot in return, right? It was not blind shot in return. You go like this, you take another shot, and maybe that hit. Maybe it did, and maybe it didn't. So he's going to have a pretty high chance, take another blind shot there, of maybe having some blind damage. But wait a minute, that's not the best way to do it. Let's look at the best way here. What you have to do so that you're guaranteed to get damage is you have to have a friend on the opposite team, like this Fosh right here, that sits sideways in the bush and allows one of the enemies to shoot him three, four times. That's how you do it and guarantee blind damage. Now what tank could have hit him four times for that kind of damage? Hmm, the TVP, T5051 on the enemy team, who happens to be in the SBS clan, playing with two clan members, there's three of them from the SBS clan, that are not in a platoon, so they dropped into this game together. They did three, two, one, drop. And they got three of their clan members on the enemy team, and one Fosh exploded. Daddy, the Fosh exploded! Don't sound so surprised, son. Foshes explode every day. That's how you blind shoot. And just like that, let me pause the video right here, guys. Just like that. It's one minute and 48 seconds into this game. And the score is 0-4. And they're losing by almost 7,000 damage. But there's no game rigging cheating that happens in this game. The fanboys say no. I've never seen any game rigging cheating. In fact, I played this game. And I was playing in the, on the 1, 2, 3 line, 4 line. And I didn't notice any game rigging cheating. Of course, you wouldn't notice any game rigging cheating if you're playing on the 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 line. How the hell would you know? <laughs> but this leopard happened to get in a position where he observed that. Guys, I'm just going to let you know, uh, thanks for subscribing to the channel and helping my channel grow as I continue my work to expose these game rigging cheaters. All right. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples today. Let's... Uh, follow up on, uh, on on what happens with the rest of this game because old Doe Stack was pretty pissed off and he was in the comments section saying uh, let's report this um, <clears throat> this uh, Fosh that allowed himself to be farmed and let's let me make the comment right now guys that this does not prove game rig and cheating these are obvious bushes that sometimes people blind shoot right? uh, and you could just say the Fosh is a really bad player and he just happened to get killed by someone who blind shot that bush uh, eight times in the TVP. The TVP is part of this uh, clan uh, and he's platooned with this guy, the other Fosh. This guy is going to now try and take revenge on these guys that tried to game rig. He's going to shoot that guy, he's going to shoot that guy. Maybe he can actually go and kill the TVP who took out his platoon mate. Let's see if he can do it. Let's see. This is how you handle game rigging cheaters, guys. You. You take matters into your own hands and you move up and now he wants to take out that platoon, that uh, platoon of players from the SBS clan and he can take another, oh no, he doesn't have a shot, come on. Can he take out the TVP? Come on buddy, we're with you. You, you guys have closed the gap, you're, you're, it's now 3-4, maybe he could take out this Fosh, take out the Fosh, oh, you like it like that, I know you like it like that, okay. The Super Conqueror is just driving by with his gun barrel in the air. Uh, why would he do that? Nobody knows. Because there's no game rigging cheating that goes on in this game. It's all skill. 
and it's all hard work and get good and learn to aim let's take this guy he's a beautiful shot he's got to get rid of this object 277 before he can go around the corner and shoot the tvp can he get a, he's got to get rid of the, the object uh, get rid of the yeah beautiful 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 one more shot on the object you should kill him and then you can go kill the guy who just farmed your teammate oh he ah critical unfortunately the cupola of the object is much too strong there's that he wants to get that tvp he wants to get that tvp but you got to take out the object first take out the object good 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 now come around the corner and can he kill the tvp can he do it can he do it can he do it oh ho, ho, yes he can don't let him clip you uh one or two more shots how many shots will it take and the tvp's probably oh wargaming is trying to help the cheater by ammo racking the leopard because it's a leopard and now he, do, he does he does not have a repair kit his repair kit is on an 80 second cool down take out the tvp take out the tvp he's got to wait to load he's got three two one more second take him out yes and he got his driver killed as well he has taken out the clan gignafasta auskuscheisen okay guys we had a little bit of fun but in seriousness at the end of the game uh, this uh, player uh, messaged H Hundu chief. I'll put the message up here. The guy who drove the fox who sat sideways in the bush. And he sent them a message and he says, what was that? Hundu chief replies, I am a pro. Who are you to question me? Yeah, right. Zero damage, he says. Hundu chief, the fox that sat sideways in the bush, says to him, you don't have enough IQ to understand. I'm a pro. I'm a pro cheater, I guess is what he's saying. It's okay, replay sent. I hope you get banned. Hundu chief says, okay, if it makes you happy, you mama. Doesn't care, not anonymized, uh, simply doesn't give a flying F. He sent a ticket into Wargaming uh, with the replay uh, about the behavior of Hundu chief allowing himself to be farmed. And let me make it clear, it's not... Uh, 100% guaranteed that he was game rigging with any specific person on the enemy team. It could just be that that TVP just blind shot the bushes and got lucky. We don't know. It could be that that platoon of uh, SBS players who dropped in together uh, simply were just having a good time. And uh, they happened to, the TVP happened to get the blind shots. We don't know. But the behavior of the Fosh sitting sideways in the bush is is. How shall we say it? Well, it's against the EULA, isn't it? Did he get banned? Let's check. Well, this game happened about uh, four or five days ago. And as you can see, Hundo Chief is still playing. He played six games in the past 24 hours, 13 games in the past three days, 70 games in the past seven days. Uh, no break uh, in his account. Ticket sent, complaint sent. Wargaming files it under the I don't give a shit pile. And the player just keeps playing. So guys, let me make it clear again that uh, it was obvious to me that that Fosh was sitting sideways in the bush there, throwing his tank away in an obvious position where you would uh, feed someone. That's a good position to uh, sit in a bush and allow someone on the enemy team to just feed on your HP. But there's no proof that he was working with any particular uh, individual on the enemy team. It was very suspicious, uh, but a fanboy would say, well, that doesn't prove anything. So we're, we're not going into... Uh, uh, looking at those accounts i'm going to show you another example here where it's completely totally obvious that there's game rigging cheating going on and this is where there's two platoons on the enemy on the enemy team and on his team the platoon on his team uh this replay sent in by uh tumaz from the ants clan to you guys. an object 260 a 121 and an object 140. look where the 121 and the object 260 have gone Look where the, uh, let me pause it right here, okay? Look, oh, I, can't, I can't pause it. Let me pause it right here. Because he's played this game and he only realized that after the fact that there was, maybe I should have shown you this battle in its entirety, okay? And then uh, after the fact said, did you notice the game rigging cheating? And I guarantee you wouldn't have noticed until, unless I point it out. And this is the typical thing that happens. You play the game, you win, you lose, you go to the next game, and most people do not even notice that there's game rigging, cheating, or nefarious activity going on at all. It's sometimes difficult to know 
unless you're looking for it or you examine it after the fact. So remember, I'm going to show you this after the fact because I've watched it and tried to understand it. But if you watch this replay without me giving you the commentary, you probably wouldn't notice. So what's happened here is a player is going to go into this little cubby hole at D4. It's the T95E6. It's going to sit in this cubby hole. Okay, and that's a standard position. There's nothing wrong with that. But what happens now? The object 140 uh, on this platoon sits on this corner right there. Look at the object 140 in the platoon sitting on, on that corner. The 121 and the object 260 are just sitting in safety right now. Who is the T95E6? He's a member of the enemy platoon. There's a platoon here, the T95E6, an object 907, and an object 277. So just watch what happens here, okay? Look at the minimap. The, uh, uh, the T95E6 is in the window. The object 140 now is going to poke out into the open. Look at the object 140. He pokes out into the open. He allows the T95E6 to farm him. We can't actually see it. Okay, we can't actually see it because if you were playing here and you were zoomed in and you were trying to shoot these people, you wouldn't notice it. But when you look at the minimap, you'll see that that Object 140 carefully backs up and pulls out whenever the T95E6 is reloaded. Now he's dead. The Object 140 is dead. Now look at the minimap. That was his turn. Now it's the Object 260's turn. The Object 260 right here drives up. Where's he going? He's going to go help his team, right? No, he's not going to go help his team. He gets to about here. And now watch what happens. He's in safety. The 1-2-1 decides to take his turn. He moves here, which is in this line of fire. And moves into the open here. Look at the 1-2-1 in the complete open. And the T-9-5-E-6 starts shooting him as well. And he's just going to sit there and allow the T-9-5-E-6 to shoot him. Meanwhile, this guy is playing the game. If we went in his uh, perspective, right? He's side scraping. He's zooming in. He's trying to come out. He's doing this. How would he notice? Only after the post-game stats. Now, while I was saying that, did you notice that the 121 exploded? Now it's the Object 260's turn. The Object 260 comes here, drives out into the open, sits sideways here, allows the T95E6 to shoot him as well along that line. Meanwhile, what are his platoon mates doing? What are the uh, Object uh, 907? and uh, the object 277. The object 277 is dead. Where's the object 907? I don't even know. We'll see what happened in the post-game stats. Object 260 just sits there, sits there, sits there. He takes his turn. The T95E6 farms him, kills him. All right, well, uh, would you have noticed? So let's look at the post-game stats here. They actually won through capping and you can look uh, at the, the results here. And you'll see that who got all the damage? Uh, uh, Rock Dragonek69, who was farming those guys from the window, the T95E6. His two platoon mates did nothing. They're just placeholders, right? They didn't do anything. The Object 907 didn't do anything. The Object 277 just died. They didn't care about their results. These three guys just got farmed. Shall we check those uh, accounts out? The Object 260 who allowed himself to be farmed is from the underscore EQ underscore clan. That's his name. He's not anonymized. This game took place on the EU server. Here he is. Let's see. Does this look like a legitimate account? Uh, he is a member of the EU clan. The account was created in 2013. Overall W8 of almost 1600. But recently, in the past 60 days, has played 312 battles with an almost zero W8. Check this graph history out. Look at this account history, guys. An account that's chugging along here, fairly active in 2022 at uh, 2,500, 2,000 W8, playing many games then fairly inactive for a period here. And now since January has basically done nothing for uh, a sessions here of 84 battles with a zero W and eight, uh, 43 battles with uh, almost zero W and eight, 60 battles with zero W and eight, 33 battles with zero W and eight, 48 battles with 131 W and eight. Basically an account that's played hundreds of games involved in game rigging, unflagged and unbanned and unsuspended by Wargaming. Wargaming just doesn't give a shit. The Object 140 on his team who allowed himself 
to be farmed. King of the Mongols account created in 2011, overall WNA of almost 2,000. Uh, but over the last thousand battles, guys, 998 battles of almost zero WNA. This account has been involved in game rigging for over a thousand battles, unflagged by wargaming. Check this graph out. Another player that's playing at about a 2,000 uh, WN8 level, a period of inactivity. This account has come back since July, and since July has done virtually zero. July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February. Eight months of game rigging, doing zero, just feeding, boosting, and Wargaming has not flagged this account or, or suspended this account. Wargaming doesn't give a shit. Let's check the one two one on his team that allowed himself to be farmed. Again, an account that uh, he's not anonymized. He knows Wargaming is not going to do anything. Overall WNA of uh, 1,400 over the past 1,000 battles, guys. Uh, WNA uh, went to almost zero. Another account that's been used for 1,000 battles simply to game rig. Not flagged, not suspended, because Wargaming doesn't give a shit. What about the enemy platoon? Uh, the guys that were just placeholders here. I remember nothing is his name. Account created 2014, overall WNA of 1,500 in the past seven days. Uh, WNA of almost zero. You look at this graph. Account chugging along, doing pretty normal here at about 13, 1,400 WNA, and then had a period of about a couple of months where it was involved in game rigging, just feeding, and now bounces around and is used for whatever purpose is necessary in rigging games. The Object 907 here, who also was just a placeholder uh, on the enemy team. Doesn't use the anonymizer, doesn't care. Executive officer at the TRAG-3 clan, overall WN8, almost 2,000. Over the past 109 battles has a WN8 of almost zero. Look at this graph. Account that was playing typically at 14, 1,500 WN8 since November is pretty much uh, a zero game feeding, game rigging account. Doesn't anonymize himself. Has been game rigging for hundreds of battles now. Doesn't care about getting caught because Wargaming doesn't give a shit. What about the guy that got the benefit of the game rigging in this particular game? Uh, this guy here in the T95E6. Surprise, surprise, he's the only guy that anonymized himself. I wonder why. His name in the game was Rock Dragon Neck 69 but his real name is this guy. Wheat Genum. And of course, he's got the best stats of the six game rigging cheaters involved in this game. Commander at the C137 clan. A commander of the clan. <laughs> ah, well. You're so good. Your stats are so impressive. So we can see from the behaviors the Fosh 155 in the first game who received the personal message didn't give a shit. He said, Go ahead, report me. I don't care. He was reported. He's still playing. These guys here that are involved in blatant game rigging, they don't even anonymize themselves. They don't give a shit. They've been rigging battles, some of these accounts, for thousands of games, unflagged, undetected. Wargaming doesn't give a shit. Um, it's just that you guys are starting to notice it now. And, and be honest, okay? Be honest, guys. How many of you... I, should I make another video of that AMX game, the one we just watched with this this game here with the game rigging. If I do another video from the perspective of that heavy tank and don't mention the game rigging and I just do the commentary on it, I guarantee that most of you, if you're not looking for it, you will not notice that there was game rigging going on. And, and I think there's many, many, many battles where it happens and people don't notice. In fact, there's proof. Uh, you look at the account statistics and these some of these accounts have been doing it for thousands of games over the past few months. Well, all of those games where they did zero, there was intention of game rigging, probably. And uh, it, it's only because you guys are watching and some of you notice it and you're sending them to me that I'm exposing it. I'm going to keep exposing it. Leave some comments. Let me know if you think Wargaming should do something. Is it okay to have this happening in the background of the game? Is it okay with you guys? It's not okay with me. I'm going to keep exposing it. And I'm going to thank you guys in advance for uh, supporting me uh, by subscribing to the channel and pass sharing this video so that we can raise awareness of this, uh, this issue. Because I think in the long run, this is going to destroy the game. Uh, left unchecked, 
in the long run, this will destroy the game. Okay, uh, Wargaming, you're not taking this seriously enough. Uh, you're underestimating how much this will affect the game in the long run. Uh, left unchecked with this kind of uh, shit show growing is going to destroy more and more games and you're going to start losing players. And anyways, guys, that's all I got for you today. Um, leave some comments, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. Let's feature Tomaz from the Ants Clan driving his AMX M451, that beautiful French heavy tank here on Ensk, the postage, postage stamped sized map that they have in this game. Very small map where you encounter the enemies very early. There's not a lot of good positions for light tanks and medium tanks in this game, but luckily he's in a heavy tank and he knows exactly where to go. He's going to be aggressive. He knows that he's going to encounter the enemies quickly, but he's going to try and take a very good aggressive early position where he can pin the enemies uh, back on their heels. So here he goes. Here he goes. He's moving up, moving up. But he's a moving on up. Here he goes. Comes around the corner and he's going to scoot right down, I think, to F1. He sees an Italian Progetto 66 who bounces on him. He takes a shot. Luckily, that's an Italian auto reloader who probably only had one shot in the clip. And he bounced this shot. Beautiful. And now while the Italian tank tries to reload and miss again, he pumps 449 damage into that Progetto. Beautiful. You're lucky that that wasn't uh, uh, an Object 277 or a, or a, or a high alpha... Uh, tank that, that pulled around that corner. It was luckily an Italian tank that did not have his four shots in the clip. So here he is. He's going to be side scraping in the city here. If you look at the team uh, deployment, he's got a couple of medium tanks in the uh, in the field. There's an STRV and a BZ heading towards the field. There's a KPZ along the tracks and there's quite a few tanks in the city. So let's see how it shakes out. Now unfortunately there's no enemies here for him to to shoot, he's side scraping this corner. It would be very risky to move up. So who should he go shoot? He's he's being a little bit indecisive here. He's looking at the end. Okay, there's three enemies in there. Should he go around and shoot them? Is he gonna take a chance and go around this corner and get some side shots? He's worried about getting shot. Sometimes there's snipers down there. Okay, he's gonna come on, you gotta you, you gotta do it. You can't be there. Okay, that's what he was worried about. The projectiles back. The Progetto's back, and he bounces a shot from the Progetto and puts another one into him, which is good. The armor on this thing is very, very good now. And he puts an another shot into Pro Just a beautiful gun on this AMX. He's just calmly holding his position, and it's in hindsight, it's probably probably very smart that he didn't go around that corner or he would have been clipped in the side by that Progetto 66 that he could have four shots in his auto reloader now right it depends what gun that Progetto is using there's uh different gun guns that he could use uh, is it three or four I don't know but he could have got taken a lot of damage if he ran, went around that corner so it's good that he did not uh, play too aggressively this uh, VZ-51 is holding this corner like a boss versus like, it looks like three or four enemies. And it's not looking very good. They're losing 3-4. And he's being very indecisive here. Buddy, you're being very indecisive. I don't know if you're helping your team just by waiting here. You're going to have to do something. Oh, he's, the Progetto wants more. He shoots one shot into the Progetto. The Progetto is probably loaded. Uh, he's aiming. The Progetto bounce. Excellent. You can ram him. No, you didn't kill him. You just have to take out the Progetto. And then... Beautiful. Now he can go around the corner and he can start... Oh, wait a minute. There's an AMX coming. An AMX 30B. He can go around the corner and start putting pressure on these guys now. Good patience. Here he comes. Watch the Object 705. He's worried about the Object 705 and he's worried about this guy who can be coming... Oh, and he missed! The Object 907, the shot dispersed. The Russian Cloak of Dispersion moved his shot out of the way and he did not hit the 907. He didn't aim it well enough. The Object 907 is just going to sit... Why is the Object 907 just going to sit sideways there? Uh, and he's, okay, he's stunned, that's why. No, he wasn't stunned when he said... Oh, but someone else is shooting. Oh, he's in big trouble now. Oh, boy. Uh, maybe he could shoot... Yeah, he got that guy. He got the Object 268. What's the Object... He's going to face... Hug. Oh, he bounced the shot. The Object 268 is going to... 
the E75 just drove by. The Omni 268 is aiming for your lower plane. Oh no! Oh, taken out by a sneaky T95 E6. Ay, ay, ay. The score is 5 7, 6 7. Boy, it looks like the enemies are pushing aggressively. But wait a minute. The STRV is capping on his team. This STRV is capping on his team. It looks like they won the field. The enemies have pushed the city. One of them is going after his uh, uh, artillery. And can the enemies be stupid enough not to come back and cap the... Uh, look at the minimap. The Object 268 is looking like he wants to come back and reset cap. But the STRV is behind those rocks. And now there's two of them in the cap. The BZ and this STRV. And the enemies are, are coming back, coming back. The Char, for two, the Char 75 is trying to track. He's, he killed the object. And two, one, zero. They win. They win by capping. No cap, kill all. Victory. Ha! So an unexpected victory by Tamaz from the Ants clan. How many of you, uh, when you watched the replay in that way, uh, realize that there were one, two, three, four, five, six game rigging cheaters in the game that allowed the T95E6 to farm 6,821 damage. Did, did you notice? Did you notice? I'll catch you guys. And be honest, did you notice? You might have said, hey, why did that Object 907 not fire back? Maybe that would have clued you into checking the post-game stats and being a little bit more attentive. That's what Tamaz did. I'll catch you guys on the next one.